The revolution will be televised. Yes, it will. It's going to be on screens. It's going to be right here on everyone else's screen, just like it is on yours right now, because we are living in a world where television is now computer screens, various other types of screens, and we don't have to tune in for any longer than we need to, any longer than we want to. And that is why video is king and you only have seven seconds to engage people. Actually, they can scroll past you. Maybe they have an issue in which they have to sit there on your webinar and feign interest. And they will just take their phone and put it out of screen view, and they will swipe right or swipe left, finding their next fascinating person. Or they'll just scroll on Facebook or YouTube. We've seen all of the different faux pas that people make. Faux pas that have resulted in some really embarrassing moments because they don't remember or realize that they're actually still on video or they're still on audio and they forgot to mute themselves and they say some god-awful shit. And the fact is that we are part of this culture now. So, let's get to the fact that the revolution is going to be your revolution and yes, it will be televised. My name is Paul Gordon. How are you? How you doing? <laughs> and I run a company called The Art of Face Dancing. And I don't need to go into a long explanation of who I am and what I do. I have been a performer with my own work on stages and TV shows around the world for the past 30-something years to an estimated worldwide viewership of well over 2 billion people. I'm a performer. I'm an artist. I create my own content and I deliver it to people with impact. Now, the difference between impact artistically and impact on training and coaching and webinars and all that stuff is that when you make an artistic expression of an idea, you have to have a certain esoteric delivery that allows people the room to get the takeaway that you want them to get without telling them. It's far more easy, it's far simpler to actually do it on business because you can tell people exactly what they should be paying attention to and exactly what they should be getting out of it, just like I just told you now, right? So let's get to the fact of what can give you the delivery that I believe is so essential because when you do what I do, when you employ the methods that I teach, you learn to, like my clients do, set yourself apart from all the others. That's what we're working with right here. This is such a short amount of time, this particular webinar, so I'm going to just go for it, okay? Video is king. It's content. It's everything. The fact is that video is the medium that converts 70 to 80 percent more than copy with stock photo footage or your amateur selfie. Afraid so. Sorry. Gonna burst your bubble. This won't be the first time in this particular lesson that I'm gonna do that. So everybody who thinks that they should be writing content and then posting stock footage or some sorry ass excuse for a really good selfie because you don't know any better. No offense, you just don't know any better. All of you who think that that's passable, workable, effective stuff, <clears throat> you're wrong. Sorry, video converts 70 to 80% more. It just plain does. And that's why you wanna make it effective, okay? You are selling you. And I'm not even talking about selling. I'm, you know, like selling in the bad sense of selling. The fact is that this is engagement. You want to be able to offer people something that you believe will help their world, will help them get over something, will help them improve the lives of not only themselves, but other people. And in order to do that, you need to truly connect. You need to connect, okay? 
So the video experience online has everything to do with the, this following fact. What you see right now is your entire video universe. This is your camera universe, okay? This is what you are seeing. You're watching me and you can be feigning, you know, you can be scrolling and multitasking and doing all sorts of other things. I don't know, but the fact is if I make it interesting and if I offer you something that's really valuable, you will stop. And that is why I want you to not do this the way everybody else does. And that's also why I want you to understand that you are getting in your own way. You see, you need to understand that there are methods to learn how to be effective on video, and there are ways to achieve a certain amount of efficacy that is akin to the people who do it so seemingly effortlessly out there. All those folks out there who are doing it great, you can be one of those people. Some of them, I know some people who are truly fine at this stuff and they have no idea what they're doing. They're just naturally comfortable. I don't want to coach them without letting them know that they will get worse before they get better. Those aren't the people I'm really needing to help. The other people who are good, the Tony Robbinses of the world, okay, or every good actor who you admire and appreciate their work on stage or screen, those people learned a process and it takes a while. So what I do is I just use all of my research, all of my experience, and I have refined something down so that people can shave weeks, months, and years off of their learning curve. And I teach skill sets. So now we're going to get into the next section here. This is saying what you mean. I believe that all of my skill sets in the art of face dancing, for example, and I'm not selling you anything, I'm just talking about what I know. My skill sets are devoted to a very specific thing. I have underneath everything I do in my life, all of the freelance jobs, all of the various aspects of my delivery and training and performing that I do on a regular basis every week, every month, every year, is based on teaching people how to get out of their own way and say what they mean, okay? Saying what you mean and getting out of your own way. So let's talk about why you say what you mean. You are unique. No one can say things exactly like you. Nobody can, in fact, articulate ideas. No one can even come up with some of the ideas that you can. You are unique. I'm going to prove this to you, or at least I will explain some research that hopefully informs you fully. Okay. Why are you unique? Because there were some researchers who asked some perhaps seemingly foolish question. What are the odds that you showed up on the planet? What are the odds that I showed up here? In order to do this, in order to understand this, they had to get a whole bunch of statistics and have them boiled down into some algorithms and crunched into a formula, right? And first they examined, uh, they went to some biogeneticists and they talked about the human genome, um, you know, the double helix with all the nucleotides and peptides. And they came up with all the numbers for that. Then they talked to some cultural anthropologists and some anthropologists about the populations of the earth and how people move places and get together and laws of attraction, all that different stuff. And they came up with all these statistics and then they gave them to some mathematicians. And the number that they came up with, the odds that you showed up on the planet are one in 400 trillion. One in 400 trillion. You are unique. 
No one can say what you can say the way you can say it. No one can think of the different ideas that you have the way you have them. So there are all of these different ways that we have, and now I want to talk about what you've been studying and what you've been learning and what you've been training in. The various coaches, for the most part, they are teaching you all the same stuff. Okay, in business, they're teaching you business crap. In psychology, they're teaching you the psychology crap. It's not new. I mean, there are occasional new people like Slavoj Zizek, but most people are just reinventing the wheel to a certain extent, and you are learning the same old tropes. So let's examine for a moment the fact that you are perhaps engaged in someone else's training program with business. They have some particular unique mechanism that they claim, and yet it is all variations of age-old things. And the flavor of the month now is the thing that's hot. But what no one can take away from you is that your engagement with people can be your own unique delivery. And this is where you really bring to bear your impact upon people because you can articulate exactly what you mean the way you mean it, okay? You can say exactly what you mean the way you mean it and most of us don't do that. We have an inner censor. That inner censor stops us from saying what we mean. But if you can say what you actually mean, you run the risk of influencing people because you can articulate what they only dream of actually saying. And maybe even some of what I'm saying here, um, you know, without cursing, I don't know, I, I have a pirate's cursing mouth, but right now I'm not, but that doesn't matter. I don't let that stuff get in my way at all. I say exactly what I mean the way I want to say it, right? The point is, I believe, and I teach this to everybody, including myself, if you know who you truly are, what you want to say, and why you want to say it, no one will stop you. No one can stop you. They can't get in here unless you let them, which in that case, too bad for you. But there are people out there who will take great offense at people who say the incendiary things, okay? And there are people who may want to try to kill you for your beliefs when you articulate what you actually mean. However, if they kill you, you're not here anymore. And if you're not here anymore, then it doesn't matter anymore. So until then, let's actually try to make a pledge to be that person who says what you truly mean, who articulates the things that other people only dream of saying out loud. When you do that, you become a leader. You become an authority figure because people will respect the fact that you are capable of saying exactly what you mean and they want some of that special sauce. You're not looking to attract everybody. You're looking to attract the people who really groove on what you're saying, who really resonate with the way you say your shit. And then they will want to have you help them learn, and then they're automatically almost pre-qualified to join your group because they already get you in a way that makes sense. So you'll be able to move forward into good progress with that person. Good. Getting out of your own way. Getting out of your own way is a big issue. Yep. We all do it. We all get in our own way. One of the things that I think, I'm guessing, I'm going out on a limb here, that you allow to get in your own way is that you have these feelings that all sorts of stuff is going to try to undermine your progress. Okay? If you have some kind of webinar or you have some kind of speech or you have some kind of lesson that you want to teach people, one of the ways you get in your own way is to examine all of the obstacles that are going to try to undermine your thing. And those things are in the way. Oh no. Oh no. And it's not that. 
you see, there's this thing I use called the performance mindset. And the performance mindset is 100%, 180 degrees flipped from what you actually think it is. You think that, in all likelihood, performance is all about presentation in some way that allows you to be able to just go forward with jazz hands, do it anyway. Pardon me for one sec, I just have to make sure my timer. So we're on here, good. Um, jazz hands and doing it anyway, nope. It doesn't work that way. You see, the way jazz hands and doing it anyway <laughs> works is if you already have done your due diligence, you have done your research, you have made sure that you understand what you're doing, and then you move forward, okay? Performance mindset is about preparing yourself, but there's more to it. What you want to do is you want to understand that chaos will always find its way in. Chaos is not trying to ruin your stuff. Chaos is trying to do its job. Chaos. And when chaos tries to find its way in, because chaos can, like sand through your fingers, or trying to hold water in your cupped hands, it will always find its way through. And when you do your due diligence, when you do your research, when you make sure that all of your homework is effectively considered, puzzled over, examined, and you have this library, this cache of information of which you will only be revealing 10% to your viewership at any given time, all of that all of that library that you have is your support team behind you. And then you can find a way through, not around the chaos, not around the obstacles, but through them. And you do it this way. You, ex you understand that all of these possible problems are not enemies. They're just trying to do their job and they can be thought of instead of enemies, you can befriend them as allies. You can understand that they are part and parcel of a life experience of which this preparation and this presentation is one, and then you turn them in your mind from enemies to allies, embrace them and go forward knowing that your whole library, your whole cache of information is what you will, will enable you to be able to kind of dodge and maneuver and bob and weave with any probable, probable issues that can arise. And then you can improvise. That way you don't have a memorized script that will get fucked up if someone or some technical glitch or whatever it is gets in the way. You turn your enemies into allies, embrace that, and move forward into your stuff with your due diligence as your backup. That's how you get out of your own way. Performance mindset. Good. So let's take a look at the concept of revolutions now. I want you to understand why this is something I'm talking about here. Revolutions can be small and can be big. We see revolutions on the news all the time. We see revolutions and some of them are uh, good ones and some of them are bad ones. But the fact is that when you understand the impact that you can create by not by embracing the fact that what you are doing is revolutionary, you will be able to locate and define the revolutionary mechanisms, the things behind what you're doing and why you're doing it so that you can be some revolutionary. There's more to it than this. The idea of a revolution is to upend a normal method. And that doesn't mean that you have to discount the other method. 
what you're doing is you're trying to improve by moving forward, visionary style, into something new, or by reverting to something that's been forgotten and should be embraced, re-embraced, and the revolution of what you are doing is what will enable you further to set yourself apart from the herd. These are all components right here. These are all components of my desire to enable you to set yourself apart from the herd. All the other people who are studying the standard tropes, they will do it like each other. And you will have all of this resemblance powder sprinkled among the masses of teachers and coaches and trainers who are doing the same shit you're doing, except they're doing it the same way everyone else is. And if you embrace the fact that you are unique and you take that stuff getting out of your own way and move it into the larger understanding of the revolutionary power that you can unlock and unleash. You will be philosophically located, staunchly entrenched in something that is really, really valuable. That will enable you to find what makes you tick and why your stuff is fundamentally different. You should, you owe it to yourself. If you are saying, look, I'm doing the same old shit everyone's doing. <laughs> oh yeah? Oh, how compelling. Wow, that's going to make me want to buy your stuff. Mmm, sign me up. Here, take my wallet, please. And isn't it more interesting if you say something like, your personal revolution starts here with this because this unlocks something really valuable that people have not been examining lately and I have been. My research is what I am going to reveal to you that can do this. And this is how you do it. This is the this and this is the this and this is the this, okay? Your courses, if they rest or if they are built on a foundation of revolution, that's juicy, that's workable, that's actionable, that's turbocharged, that is somewhat controversial. And when you say it the way only you can, you don't have to be, you know, brutal about it or aggressive about it. You can, you can be, you know, you can be a revolutionary with love. You can be a revolutionary with gentle, gentle care. You know, all, all these different things. It doesn't have to be aggressive. It just has to be something that you truly believe in that way. Okay. Your unique style is going to be your salvation. You see, when you do that, this is not just about selling something to someone. This is about unlocking your own freedom. My freedom, what I do, is <laughs> it's liberating. I choose exactly what I want to do when I want to do it. I only work with people I want to, and as soon as I find that they are not someone I want to work with, I cut them loose. I am, I make my own choices. My life is my own. My freedom is my own. And, and all of the things that I do have far greater value than money alone. I place a higher, ser a higher set of criteria on value than money. And therefore, I have liberated myself to be able to do exactly what I want when I want to. Of course, I have all sorts of business stuff that I have to do. I have zero problem with that because I like doing it. I am preaching the gospel of me on a regular basis, and I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. I don't even sell. My salesmanship 
is very, very low. People come to me when they're ready. So, in fact, my unique way of delivering and my gentle sense of ethical salesmanship or salespersonship has everything to do with disarming people. It's not an aggressive sales mechanism at all. And when I resonate with somebody, they will come to me in their time. And I can talk about the money. I can talk about the issues. I can talk about all the different things involved in working together. But it is a larger understanding of freedom because I get what it is that I want to say, the way I want to say it, why I am interested in any of this stuff, and I have liberated myself from that inner sensor that gets in the way all the time. And so, I have enabled my unique mechanism, my unique delivery, to be my own salvation. Not just for business, making money, but because I'm more comfortable. And that is freeing on a much higher level or a much more basic foundational series of premises, right? <clears throat> That's why your unique salvation is something I wanted to bring up here. Your uniqueness is your salvation. Okay, good. Stories to save the world, what does that mean? All of the stories that you have to offer, all of your storytelling skills, all of your unique experiences are personal anecdotes and analogies that you can use to get people to understand what you are hoping they will understand. And when you use your stories to get them to understand you, you are creating a connection with this person that is based deeply in an empathetic connection. You are developing empathy through your stories. In fact, if the eyes are the windows to the soul, the eyebrows are the windows to empathy. Your empathetic storytelling skills need to express something very deep and important. You see, you're not just telling someone something to explain why this thing helps this little thing or that, that thing helps that little thing. It has to be more than that. Your unique stories and your empathetic connection with people should be anchored in the fact that what you are talking about will eventually and ultimately help save the world. What you are doing each time can be hooked, connected, directly to something much deeper, much more profound that saves the world. If you're trying to just get somebody to buy your stuff, that will fall flat. If you're trying to just get someone to listen to you, that will also fall flat. If you truly understand why a particular story or issue or tale or anecdote or analogy saves the world, then you can actually speak passionately about this thing in a way that lets people know that you truly care, why you care, and how it can actually do that. So I want you to retool your concept of what your stuff is so that it is deeply rooted in revolution and it saves the fucking planet. That is 
then going to be something that no one can stop you from believing. And you're not trying to convince people, you're just trying to inform them of the essential, the essentialosity, the essentialness, the essentiality that you and your beliefs are part of doing true, pure, valuable, fundamental good. And then you can really do some damage. One second, just have to check the computer one more time. Good. We're at four minutes. So I'm going to recap here, okay? <clears throat> First of all, we all understand that video is king. Okay, my skill sets are designed to enable people to understand, firstly, their camera universe so that they can develop method that gains control that gives them camera confidence. Afterwards, they connect their copy and content so that they can make things that are refined and paired back and cl you know, clear and succinct so that you can say exactly what you mean. Then you learn how to connect your empathetic storytelling experiences to your products and services so that you can generate that empathy. And then you get out of your own way with your performance mindset so that you can move forward into your stuff with an improvised and improvisational ability to embrace the chaos instead of look at it as a big obstacle. And you go through, not around, through, right? Okay, good. These are some of the skills. But the deeper understanding of everything that I'm saying has everything to do with knowing that a revolution taking place from within my uniquely articulated belief system can save the world. And when you have that unique salvation deal, you are no longer trying to explain something just because of some sales pitch or some business thing. You have actually liberated yourself on many other levels. I know I said this earlier, but I want to let you know once more. What you have to offer people is a reflection of what you have learned yourself. And then you bring everything you can to bear upon the training that enables somebody else to gain the assistance they need. But it doesn't stop there. It reverberates through their life and the lives of the people they care about and the lives of the people they touch. And that is a much broader understanding of how you can truly help people. It's not just stopping at one person. It goes far beyond. So I just want to let you know in this last moment, minute, seconds, that hopefully what I have just expressed to you is a direct reflection, <coughs> excuse me, of exactly what this is. I believe in the revolution of my work and my video here is proof positive of my deep-seated belief that this shit actually saves the planet. The underpinnings of everything I do lie in teaching people and reminding myself and using myself as an example of how to get out of my own way and say what I truly mean. I want the same for you. I hope you found this useful. I look forward to hearing any comments, queries, inquiries, go get them.
do it now.